now, Daisy? Huh? You ready to do your video, girl? Huh? You ready to do your video? I got something for you. Come on. All right, guys. I told you this video was coming. So uh, it is time. Miss Daisy meets the spotlight, right, girl? You ready to do your video? I woke her up. She was over here laying on the pond, pond dike with the goats underneath the shade tree. And uh, we have been getting bombarded with questions for the last several months, but recently here in the last couple weeks about our livestock guardian dogs. A lot of, we got a lot of new viewers and uh, I know a lot of you guys has, has been following us, know a lot about Miss Daisy. And uh, we also have Mojo at Great Pyrenees and we'll, we'll talk about him in another video, but today is gonna be about Daisy. Uh, we've had Daisy now for two years. We got her when she was a year old and uh, she had not really been with a big herd or nothing. She was just pretty much uh, running free. She was uh, on pretty much free range, just with a handful of goats. And uh, whenever she came here, she got introduced pretty quick to a bunch of goats. And uh, now she's about three, she's a little over three years old. Uh, she has been fixed, so she can't have any uh, baby puppies, of course. And uh, I got a little surprise we're gonna talk about here in a minute with Daisy. I don't know what she's going to think of it, but we're going to try it out. Um, anyways, Daisy is an Anatolian Shepherd. She's a full-blood Anatolian Shepherd female. Um, she had, like I said, she had previously been raised around goats only, but when she came to our farm, she was raised around uh, chickens, turkeys, other dogs, and she has done wonderful. She does a very good job about uh, keeping the stray dogs away coyotes and i will even if i can remember i'll put up an i card to a video where we came out and she was all bloody um i had to go out into the woods and get her because a bobcat coming around when we had all the baby goats on the ground and she had jumped our fence and went into the woods and i found her oh about probably 300 yards 350 yards from the barn out in the uh, deep woods here she had a bobcat treed she had some scratches and stuff on her but she she uh she must have got the best of them but anyways come here days let's let's find a shade tree to go do this little interview come on we're gonna go find the shade tree real quick all right guys so i got her a little snack here a little treat just some uh bar ass hot dogs sit down sit down good girl so a lot of people always ask us in our videos why do you interact with your uh livestock guardian dogs and that's, that's one thing this video is going to talk about. We're going to talk about that. Um, training a livestock guardian dog is not something that you can do 100%. A lot of the training in these livestock guardian dogs is bred into them by instinct. And livestock guardian dogs can go back thousands of years in the Middle East and such. Uh, goat and uh, sheep, shepherds and the herdsmen, whatever you want to call them. They would have free range, you know, they took their flock or goats, whatever, hundreds of miles all over just letting them forage and graze and all that stuff. Well, they had to have a good group of these livestock guardian dogs because back in the days they had uh, lions, they had bears, all kinds of stuff, predators. And they, if they didn't have these dogs, they would have got wiped out big time because they had so many head of livestock, they couldn't keep up with them themselves. That's all I got, girl. So anyways, if you guys do any research, there's a handful of uh, breeds of dogs. Anatolian is what Daisy is, and she's one of them. You can research it. Records go back thousands of years on these things. Uh, Great Pyrenees is another. There's Akbosh. There's all kinds of them. But we're going to talk about the Anatolian. Um, like I said, she is a full-blood Anatolian. And one thing about her is they got these dew claws here. I know you can't hardly see them. I'll grab the camera and I'll if I can remember, I'll try to talk about it here in a little bit. But they got some double dew claws and that's how you tell if they're purebred. And what that is, is they evolved over time. Like I said, in the Middle East and such, uh, it was a lot of rocky terrain and mountains and stuff like that. And they actually grew these dew claws over time uh, they adapted, you know, like everything else, and that is how they gain traction to fight and all that type of stuff. You can go online and research it, like I said. 
But getting back to what I started saying is, people say you can't interact with your livestock guarding dog because it runs them. That is partly true. If you're out there all the time, and uh, you get say you bring home a puppy and you're out there just playing with it all the time, half time you leave it with the animals, half time you want to play with it, who do you think they're going to want to be with? They're going to want to be with you or the person that brings them food or pets them and gives them attention. A lot of times if you put a dog out here with these goats, the goats are going to headbutt them and they're going to keep their distance. They don't want the dog anywhere around them until they gain a relationship with them. So we got lucky with Daisy. There is no such thing as a perfect livestock guardian dog but she's one of the closest ones to being perfect that we've ever had she's the best one we've ever had we like to maintain a good relationship with our livestock guardian dogs for instance we have two small children if our kids want to come out here and mess around with the goats they have a uh, fort down here that daisy actually sleeps in underneath it all the time if the kids want to come out here and play who do you think is watching over them and protecting our children it's our livestock guardian dogs, especially Daisy. She loves our kids. Um, she loves her livestock. If Rachel and I are out here working the goats, we have to pin her up or put her on a leash because if we grab a goat and they go to screaming or hollering, alerting the dog, she will eat our lunch. She will actually come and get between us and the goat and try to get us to leave her alone. She's never bit us or anything like that, but I would never trust her with a stranger here if somebody tried to grab a goat or something that she didn't know, she would eat their lunch. And uh, she's she's done very well at fighting off neighbor dogs that's got in here. Like I said, she fought off the uh, bobcat, had it treed. I got a video on that. Uh, I, if I can remember, I would have put the iCard up earlier in the video, but I'll try to leave it in the description as well. But anyways, guys, we get so many questions. I don't have a uh, notepad or anything with all the questions, but that's... Uh, the part of the interaction, you know, I'm out here with her right now, petting her. As soon as I walk out of here, she might follow me to the gate, but five minutes later, she's going to be back with all her goats because she knows her job. And uh, if you guys follow the channel or if you go back and watch some of our, our older videos, anytime there was baby goats on the ground or anything, she'd be laying right by the mama when she had the babies. Sometimes these dogs will help clean them up, and that is a good thing because... You'll walk out and sometimes you'll see these dogs eating the afterbirth from the uh, from the kids being born. And that is part of their instinct duties because what that does is if you have afterbirth laying here, that scent's going to carry down. You're going to get predators, whatever kind of predator you got. Here we got mostly uh, bobcats and coyotes that are a threat to our, our kids or baby goats. So what their job is to do is to clean that baby up if the mama's not doing it and eat the afterbirth pretty quick. And that gets rid of the scent. Um, another cool story about Daisy is uh, back in May, we had some baby piglets born. And a couple of the baby piglets got out of the pen. They got through the fence, got away from the mama. And Daisy's pen's not anywhere close to where these pigs were born. But somehow the next morning, Daisy, we spent all night searching. But the next morning, we never found them. The next morning, Daisy found one of those baby piglets and brought it up to the gate as I was getting up in the morning I was looking out here and I seen she had something in her mouth and I come out here and sure enough it was one of those baby piglets which it had already died it, it got too cold in the night or whatever and uh she was carrying it around and she was proud that she found it but she knew something wasn't right so she led me to that baby pig and she did a good job there so what I got as a surprise Daisy, you're going to be mad at me, girl. <laughs> I got one of my older GoPros. Oh, look at her. She's saying, no, no, not that again. I got a video where I put this on her before, and the whole time she's going through these brush piles and trees, and she's just trying to get rid of this, knocking it off. So I'm going to try to figure out how to get this thing put on her, and we're going to let her run around. I'm going to walk out of here for a little bit and let, let this do some recording, and we'll kind of see what she does. You ready to try this? Come on. I gave you your treats. Come on. I don't know if this one, if we want to put this on the top or bottom. Let's put it on the bottom. Come here. Oh, you gotta sit up. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Let's see how this goes, girl. Alright, guys, so I got it adjusted to where it's on the top now, and I'm gonna take off, like I said, and leave the gate and see what she does. 
Okay, so I kind of snuck around the shop. I'm gonna watch her to see where she goes because last time the first thing she did was she tried really hard trying to get that harness off of her. She did not like it one bit. So let's walk over here. So one cool thing about these dogs is they don't like when there's just one or two of the goats outside the herd. So what I just seen her do is there was two goats way over off in the corner, a long ways from the other, the big herd. So Daisy went over there and she checked on them and then she pushed them back over here and they came running back to the herd. That's just some of the awesome instincts that these dogs hold. You know, there's a reason that people has been using these breeds of dogs for thousands of years as their livestock guardian dogs. People raise these things to guard all kinds of livestock. People use them for cattle guard, they use them for horses, they use them for chickens, turkeys, everything. A lot of people even like them for their own house. You know, they, they are very protective over children as well. And you can make them a family dog. I mean, pretty much she's a family dog. We're out here every day interacting with her and there's no problems with that, I promise you. And I know there's a lot of people that have way bigger farms than us and they just want to turn their dogs loose and never have any interaction with them at all. And that's fine. But, you know, we have a small farm here on 20 acres. So this is the way we uh, prefer to raise our livestock guardian dogs. So you can see she's kind of, she's kind of confused. She's walking around everywhere, doing her checks and stuff, I guess. This is way over there. And I'm just watching her real good because I don't want her to lose that camera. But the goats will usually follow these dogs. You know, they want to be around them because they want to be protected. You can kind of see the goats are kind of go her way. There's no goats over where she's at. But they see where she's at, so they're going to kind of follow her around. And normally, what happens is the dog... The dogs will stay with the herd most of the time. And you can see we got some of these heels here. This is a compost pile from some wood chips. We got an old burn pile right there, just some dirt and stuff. A lot of times what will happen is these dogs will get up on a high vantage point. That way they can see all around your land. They can see your whole pasture. If they see any kind of predator, coyotes or anything, they're on them. And for the amount of land we have, we found that one dog is suitable for here. We have not lost any livestock uh, over here where Daisy guards since we've had her. She is very vicious. Um, she does kill cats. She kills stray dogs. She hates birds. If there's a hawk, any kind of predator, if there's a hawk in the sky and she sees it flying, she will bark at it and run at it until it is way out of distance. I wish I could catch it on camera. I know I have a few times. I just don't know which video that's on or I'd share it, but I'll let her play around with that camera a little more and then we'll walk out here and uh, end the video with her. You know, Daisy, you ready to get that off? Huh? Come on, let's go look at your goats. Come on, let's go look at your goats. She said, take this off right now. Come here, goats. Come here, jerk face. Huh? Is it that time, brother? All right, Daisy. All right, guys, she will not move. She wants me to take this off. Like right now, she's, you know, goat. So there is one of the piles I was talking about that Daisy likes to get up on and lay. So that way she can kind of be higher than everything and she can see all the way around. Well, you know, girl. Huh? Are you mad at me? All right, let's get that thing off. All right, guys. So this was Daisy's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm trying to think of any other topics. Um, a lot of people ask us, uh, can you turn in what you would call a mutt dog or like a half-bred Anatolian to a half-bred German Shepherd? And although that has been successful, I do not recommend that because certain breeds of dogs have different kinds of instincts. And uh, like German Shepherds, a lot of times they'll be 
chicken killers and you know stuff like that if they're not raised around chickens they just were not bred years and years and years over and over to be with livestock and stuff like that so you can do whatever you want to do and you can I, I believe you can train any kind of dog to do anything but the getting a breed like this makes things so much easier and uh like i said earlier there's no such thing as a perfect livestock guardian dog but if you can find one like this they are worth their weight in gold because she is the number one tool of this farm if something was to happen to her and we did not have her these these goats would be getting picked off here and there by coyotes neighbor dogs stray dogs bobcats just whatever you know we even have sightings of mountain lions in this area there's bears and we got bees so if a bear starts coming around we don't know she might be protecting the beehive you know if she smells a bear she might start barking at them and run them off and i got a goat chewing on my camera come here one sock come here leave that camera alone but uh, one of the other benefits to an Anatolian over some of the other livestock guardian dogs that I really like is this short hair. And if you guys seen our other dog, uh, Mojo, he's a full blood Great Pyrenees. He's a big dog. He sheds constantly. We have to brush him all the time. They get super hot. Her hair is slick and she does not shed that bad at all. And I got a new friend here. But... Yeah, I, I really prefer their coats over the Great Pyrenees, which the Great Pyrenees' fur is like it is, or hair is like it is for a reason. It does protect them from from other uh, mm -hmm. bites from predators, or if they're fighting a coyote or something, it does actually protect them. It protects them from the heat and the cold. It protects them from briars and stuff like that running through the woods and all that. So there is a reason why these dogs have evolved over time. and. Before I forget, I'm gonna show you her dew claws, the double dew claws, which Anatolians have them, Great Pyrenees have them. And I don't know about the other dogs, so I'm not gonna talk about them. Uh, we have had a Commodore dog. It, Commodores are big, aggressive livestock guardian dogs. And we got one as a puppy, and it was almost a year old. And our sheep started lambing, and the Commodore started killing the baby sheep got really protective over the babies it would start biting the moms on the neck so i had to put it down i tried training it for weeks and weeks and it just would not break it and i actually had him in with our old dog bear he was a great pyrenees i got some old videos on him too he was a great dog the number one thing this goat got her horn wrapped in my shirt the number one thing about these livestock guardian dogs is being able to train them to be around multiple species you guys know we got hogs we got chickens turkeys goats other dogs and daisy doesn't harm any of them she would actually protect any of these livestock or other animals from a predator and he, just like mojo he protects our chickens it's hard to find one that will protect your goats and not kill your chickens uh, i know i have a lot of friends and some family that has tried finding livestock guardian dogs over time you know, you think you got one, you wake up the next morning, all your chickens are dead, and it's because of your own livestock guardian dog. It happens all the time. That's just part of it. Um, the best thing you can do is get a baby dog or get a puppy and raise it with your livestock. Put it in there and leave it alone. Let the goats train the dog. Um, go out there and make sure it's not killing your chickens and stuff, and if it does, you got to take care of it right away. I know most of you probably have heard the saying, once a dog tastes the blood of a chicken or the taste of a chicken, they'll never stop in their life. And uh, that's not completely true, but a lot of times if they do kill, start killing chickens when they're real young, they'll never stop. More times than not. And uh, a lot of people ask us how we keep uh, parasites and ticks and fleas off these dogs. And one way is we give them a Brevecto peel. And that's good for three months. And we also have these Serestro collars that last, I think, nine months. She don't have a flea or a tick on her ever. And uh, I just recently had some flies biting her ears. And the way we treated that was with a uh, product called SWAT, which we bought off Amazon. And it actually healed her ears up. And it it makes her ear, or makes their, their, it makes their dogs resistant to flies. Flies don't even want to mess with them. So it worked really well. She don't have no flies on her or nothing. So one of our awesome subscribers recommended that to us and we tried it and it has worked very well. So let me grab the camera real quick. So just go to quit uh, horning me in the back and I'll show you guys her dew claws. 
Okay, so one of the other questions we always get is, how do you know if a dog is 100% Anatolian or Great Pyrenees? Well, I'm gonna show you something, a good tip, which hers needs to be trimmed up a little bit. This is what you call a double dew claw. Here is her paw, right here. And then you see these two things right here? That's a double dew claw, and she has them on both feet right here. And like I said earlier, that's for traction and climbing. From way back in the days, they just evolved and grew those. And that's just part of it. And that is how you tell if you got a full blood uh, Anatolian or Great Pyrenees. And I'm sure there are some full bloods out there that don't have the double dew claws. But if they have the double dew claws, you can almost guarantee that they are a full blood either mix between those breeds or that breed. And usually you can tell if they're mixed by their hair. A lot of times the pups from a, say a half Pyrenees or a full Pyrenees and a full uh, Anatolian, some like half the pups will be short haired and half of them will be long haired. And you can tell Daisy, she's actually changed over time. Her hair color used to be all this fawn color. Now you can see she's got some white in her and she's starting to get a stripe. And these Anatolians got these curled tails as well. I don't know what's behind that, but that's just the way the Anatolians look. And she weighs about 90 pounds. She is, like I said, she's fixed. I'm really upset that we can't get some puppies out of her. Because like I said, guys, she is worth her weight in gold. So, I guess that's going to uh, pretty much wrap up the Daisy video, guys. I hope I answered some of your questions. I know I'm missing a ton of them. But uh, we have been very blessed to be able to have Miss Daisy as one of our livestock guardian dogs. So Daisy, thank you so much for your service, girl. I hope you're happy. Are you happy? Huh? All right, guys. So if you guys got any more questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Rachel and I will get on there and try to answer them. I know so many of you ask a lot of questions about the livestock guardian dogs. And this little video is just a little tidbit of information. From our knowledge, we're, you know, we're not professional dog people or nothing else. This is just from our experience. But if you got a question that I did not answer, please leave it in the comments down below. And if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and uh, like this video. Share it if you like this video. Share it on your social media, on Facebook or whatever. And uh, we'll see you next time.